Canonical Huffman Code. A canonical Huffman code is a particular type of Huffman code with unique properties which allow it to be described in a very compact manner. Data compressors generally work in one of two ways. Either the decompressor can infer what codebook the compressor has used from previous context, or the compressor must tell the decompressor what the codebook is. Since a canonical Huffman codebook can be stored especially efficiently, most compressors start by generating a normal Huffman codebook and then convert it to canonical Huffman before using it. In order for a simple code scheme, such as the Huffman code, to be decompressed, the same model that the encoding algorithm used to compress the source data must be provided to the decoding algorithm so that it can use it to decompress the encoded data. In standard Huffman coding, this model takes the form of a tree of variable length codes, with the most frequent symbols located at the top of the structure and being represented by the fewest bits. However, this code tree introduces two critical inefficiencies into an implementation of the coding scheme. Firstly, each node of the tree must store either references to its child nodes or the symbol that it represents. This is expensive in memory usage, and if there is a high proportion of unique symbols in the source data, then the size of the code tree can account for a significant amount of the overall encoded data. Secondly, traversing the tree is computationally costly since it requires the algorithm to jump randomly through the structure in memory as each bit in the encoded data is read in. Canonical Huffman codes address these two issues by generating the codes in a clear standardized format. All the codes for a given length are assigned their values sequentially. This means that instead of storing the structure of the code tree for decompression, only the lengths of the codes are required, reducing the size of the encoded data. Additionally, because the codes are sequential, the decoding algorithm can be dramatically simplified so that it is computationally efficient. Contents. 1. Algorithm 1.1 as a fractional binary number. 2. Encoding the codebook. 3. Pseudocode for algorithm. Algorithm. The normal Huffman coding algorithm assigns a variable length code to every symbol in the alphabet. More frequently used symbols will be assigned shorter code. For example, suppose we have the following non-canonical codebook. A equals 1, 1, B equals 0, C equals 1, 0, 1, D equals 1, 0, 0. Here the letter A has been assigned two bits, B has one bit, C and D both have three bits. To make the code a canonical Huffman code, the codes are renumbered, the bit lengths stay the same with the code book being sorted first by code word length and secondly by alphabetical value. Um, so if you're not doing Huffman codes with strings and you're sorting bytes, you would lexicographically sort uh, these instead of alphabetically sort them. Uh, which would just be a fancy way to say uh, sort the bytes by their numerical value. So B equals 0, A equals 1, 1, C equals 1, 0, 1, D equals 1, 0, 0. Each of the existing codes are replaced with a new one of the same length using the following algorithm. The first symbol in the list gets assigned a code word, which is the same length as the symbol's original code word, but all zeros. This will often be a single zero. Each subsequent symbol <clears throat> is assigned the next binary number in the sequence, ensuring that following codes are always higher in value. When you reach a longer code word, then after incrementing, append zeros until the length of the new code word is equal to the length of the old code word. This can be thought of as a left shift. By following these three rules, the canonical version of the code book produced will be B equals zero, A equals one zero, C equals one one zero, D equals one one one. As a fractional binary number, Another perspective on the canonical code words is that they are digits past the radix point, binary decimal point, in a binary representation of a certain series. Specifically, suppose the lengths of the code words are, um, is that an I? Or, uh, I don't know, I don't really know what those symbols are. Um, it almost looks like an absolute value and an N. Um... Yeah, hold on, I'll be back.
All right, so those look like L's. Um, so it's like a L1 to a LN, so probably like, uh, just, I'm pretty sure that just means a range of values, or maybe that's possibly like an I1 to IN, so a ser it's a series of I's. So, as a fractional binary number. Another perspective on the canonical code words is that they are the digits past the radix point, binary decimal point, in a binary representation of a certain series. Specifically, suppose the lengths of the code words are L1 dot 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 uh, ln then the canonical code word for symbol i is sorry so that's i1 dot 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 in then the canonical code word for symbol i is the first or maybe that's an l i don't know but of uh, the first Binary digit past the radix point in the binary representation of... Yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, so we got a sigma notation. Um, so we got I minus 1 at the top. I don't remember how to read this. Um, let me go look that up. Alright, so looking up the formula. Uh, J equals 1 is our starting point. I minus 1 is our stopping point. Uh, a lot of the things are saying, you know, this is the lower limit and this is the upper limit. Uh, but I'm pretty sure where that is a generalization that is not always true because your summation could be um, uh, stepping backwards, not forwards. Uh, so you could be counting down instead of counting up. Uh, so this is your starting value, and this is your ending value. We have two variables, j equals 1, uh, and then i minus 1. Um, so it's whatever. Uh, so we start at 1, um, and then we have... I'm not sure how we increment it, though. Um, hold on, I'll be back. Okay. Okay. So I was double checking. This is uh, the starting value. This is the ending value. It looks like um, you do always increment j uh, moving forwards by uh, by one, um, and this is the formula to evaluate for each step. Uh, and you know you evaluate this formula for each value of j. J starts at one and ends at i minus one, and I believe i minus one is an inclusive range. So uh, the lower bound and the upper bound are inclusive, and uh, for every step you evaluate this formula and you add it to a running total. Okay, this perspective is particularly useful in light of Kraft's inequality, which says that the sum above will always be less than or equal to 1, since the lengths come from a prefix-free code. This shows that adding 1 in the algorithm above never overflows and creates a code word that is longer than intended. Encoding the codebook. The whole advantage of a canonical Hoffman tree is that one can encode the description, the codebook, in fewer bits than a fully described tree. Let us take our original Hoffman codebook, A equals 1, 1, B equals 0, C equals 1, 0, 1, D equals 1, 0, 0. There are several ways we could encode this Hoffman tree. For example, we could write each symbol followed by the number of bits and code. So A, two bits, and we'll use 1-1. One, one. B, one bit, and we'll use A0 to encode that. C, three bits, and we'll use 101 to encode that. D, three bits, and we'll use 100 to encode that. Since we are listing the symbols in sequential alphabetical order, we can omit the symbols themselves, listing just the number of bits and the code. So that's sensible, since we have a strict ordering of how we're going to order our symbols, A, B, C, and D. We have that alphabetical order. We can omit that, and we can still reconstruct the data from the following. Uh, so we have a code that is two bits long, and it's 1-1. One, one. A code that is one bits long, and is a zero. A code that is three bits long, and is a one zero one. And another code that's three bits zero, and that is that is three bits long, and is a one zero zero. So that makes sense. How you can 
Uh, because we have a strict alphabetical order, we can omit the actual letters, and from this, we can reconstruct this. We have enough information here. As long as we know that the letters are A, B, C, and D, it uh, doesn't matter what order. Uh, it could be C, D, B, A. It doesn't matter what order. As long as we know we have those letters, we can take this and reconstruct this just from the knowledge of what letters uh, this is encoding for. Um, okay, so let's keep reading. With our canonical version, we have the knowledge that the symbols are in sequential alphabetical order, what I was saying earlier, and that the later code will always be higher in value than an earlier one. The only parts left to transmit are the bit lengths, number of bits for each symbol. Note that our canonical Hoffman tree always has higher values for longer bit lengths and that any symbol of the same bit length, C and D, have higher code values for higher symbols. Okay, let's keep on scrolling. Okay, uh, A equals one zero, code value two, decimal bits two. B zero, code value zero, decimal bits one. C one one zero, code value six, decimal bits three. D one one one, code value seven, decimal bits three. Okay. So it's just saying the decimal value of the binary representations on the left. Since two thirds of the constraints are known, only the number of bits for each symbol need to be transmitted. So we have two, one, three, and three. Um, now that's, I'm a little bit confused because I've read about Hoffman code, canonical Hoffman codes before, so I know what they're getting at. Um, but to be able to just write only this requires that we're using canonical Huffman codes, which we aren't here because this is longer than this. So it's definitely not a canonical Huffman code yet. So I'm a little bit confused about that, but let's, uh, let's keep on going. With knowledge of the canonical Huffman algorithm, it is then possible to recreate the entire table, symbol, and code values just from the bit lengths. Unused symbols are normally transmitted as having a zero bit length. Another efficient way representing the codebook is to list all symbols in increasing order by their bit lengths and record the number of symbols for each bit length. For the example mentioned above, the encoding becomes 112 comma B a, C, D. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why there's a 1, 1, and a 2, but there's B, A, C, D. That's not correctly paired. Um, that might be a typo. Uh, this means that the first symbol B is of length 1, then A of length 2, and remains of three. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. Since the symbols are sorted by bit length, we can efficiently reconstruct the codebook. A pseudocode describing the reconstruction is introduced on the next section. Uh, they did say this article had issues, so maybe I, either I don't understand or there's actually some issues in what I'm reading here. This type of encoding is advantageous when only a few symbols in the alphabet are being compressed. For example, suppose the codebook contains only four letters, C, O, D, E, each of length two. To represent the letter O using the previous method, we need to either add a lot of zeros, zero, zero, two, 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 zero, dot, 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 comma, two, dot, 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 or record which four letters we have used. Each way makes the description longer than 0, 4, C, O, D, E. Oh, okay, wait, no? Yeah, I'm not sure what this is about, how this, there's only two numbers here, but there's three letters here. Um, uh, I thought these were the lengths of the codes, so 
that doesn't quite make sense. A frequency table doesn't make sense because there's four things here, so we need four frequencies. I don't, I don't understand what this is. Okay, let's just keep writing, reading. The JPEG file interchange format uses this method of encoding because at most only 162 symbols out of the 8-bit alphabet, which has size 256, will be in the codebook. Pseudocode. Given a list of symbols sorted by bit length, the following pseudocode will print a canonical Huffman codebook. Okay, code equals zero, while more symbols do print symbol code. Code equals code plus one, and bit shifted over to the left, bit length of the next symbol, minus current bit length. Okay, so that's the pseudocode we need to use. Okay, scrolling down, we have an algorithm. I thought pseudocode was an algorithm, but let's just read. The algorithm described in A Method for the Construction of Minimum Redundancy Codes, David A. Huffman, Proceedings of the IRE is algorithm. Compute Huffman code is input message and symbol set of message probability. So probability is likely also could be read as frequency uh, because we're creating a histogram table of the different symbols. Um, so I would probably read probability as a histogram or as a frequency. I think that makes more sense for me. Uh, but anyways, input message and symbol set of message and probability. Base D, so I believe D for decimal maybe. Output code and symbol set of message and code. One, sort the message and symbol by decreasing probability. So higher frequency symbols at the top, uh, lower frequency symbols on the bottom, or in another way you could say is um, decreasing probability. So high probability at the top of your list and low probability at the bottom. So um, more likely things on the top, less likely things on the bottom. Okay, so that's step number one, just sorting the list by the probability. Two. N is the cardinal of the message and symbol number of different messages. Um, N is the cardinal of the message and symbol. So I don't really know what that means. Um, three, compute the integer N0, such as um, N is greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to D. Oh, N0 is greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to d, and n minus n0 divided by d minus 1 is integer. Four, select the n0 least probable messages and assign them each a digit code. Five, substitute the selected messages by a composite message summing their probability and reorder it. Six, while there remains more than one message, do steps through eight. Seven, select D least probable messages and assign them each a digit code. Eight, substitute the selected messages by a composite message summing their probability and reordering it. Nine, the code of each message is given by the concatenation of the code digits of the aggregate they've been put in. Reference. One, managing gigabytes, book with an implementation of canonical Huffman codes, for word dictionaries. Okay, so I'm done reading that. Don't quite understand it all, but uh, it was a good refresher.